Hey what is up, Eli here. In this tutorial I will teach you how to make streets and bridges in Cinema 4D. And we are going to do this by recreating this little scene right here. So let's jump straight into it and start off with our base or floor as you may call it. It is just a cube which we are flattening out. Next create another cube and this is going to be the rough size of our street. So we can cut it out of the floor later. So you might want to make sure it's also a little longer to overlap the ends here. And let's place it close to where the street was on our example at the beginning of the video. And to make the cut, add a bool object and drag our cubes inside of it. And our order seems to be incorrect, so drag our bottom cube above the other one. Now you can adjust the cube that represents the street to your liking. Next, we are going to add the sidewalks. Start off with yet another cube, and I'm gonna make this one 10 cm wide and 15 cm long. That looks like an appropriate size for this one. But now we want this to repeat itself. So we will do this with a cloner object. Drag the cube inside of it and you can see the cloning is happening right now, but in the wrong direction. So let's rotate this cloner object 90 degrees and then in the transform options we can rotate the clones themselves. When we place this in the correct spot you can start adding more clones of these. But the gaps are way too big right now, so down here you can adjust the length of every gap. And a 16 cm gap is perfect for this one. Let's make sure we have enough clones to fit the entire length of our floor. And you shouldn't worry if it overlaps, you probably even want this to happen at this point. I am also making sure they overlap the sides of our street and that they don't stick out too much because it will end up looking strange. We can now duplicate this sidewalk to the other side while holding command or control and dragging it in place. Now let's cut the overlapping parts here. There are many ways to fix this, like making the cloner editable and just resizing the outer cubes. But to keep the cloner intact, we will use another bool object for this one. To stay organized, I am going to group these two cloners by pressing Alt and G and naming them appropriately. And drag them inside of our bool object, and also add a copy of our big base cube inside of it. It is a matter of selecting the right boolean type here to get the right cuts. You can scroll on top of it to switch faster. But I forgot something stupid here, which is that we have to move our big cube up a little, so it actually overlaps the entire sidewalks. So now that is done, let's try our types again. And for this one, A intersect B seems to be the one. Okay, this one was quite easy and straightforward, but what if we want to make a curved road? There are many ways, but I'm going to stick with just one method now. There might be some videos in the future explaining the other ones. In this case I'm going to combine this with a bridge as well. To draw the directions your road or bridge will go, you need to use the pen tool. So let's switch to our top view with the middle mouse button and start drawing the center line of our bridge. You are free to do this any way you like, but to get the result of the start of the video I'm gonna make sure the lines are straight. But you can see, unlike in Illustrator or Photoshop, holding shift doesn't give you a perfect straight line. So instead, press escape after creating that first point. And now you can duplicate the point with the move tool and holding control or command. So this way I can make the perfect straight 90 degree corners in any direction. As you can notice I did not round the corners yet, just because I find it to be a pain in the ass. Instead, select our two points on the corners. Right click and select chamfer. Now when you drag you get the perfect curves. Make sure to make them large enough because the road will be a lot wider than this simple line of course. Back in our perspective mode drag the spline up a little to a height where you would like to have your bridge. To turn this spline into an object we will use this sweep object. What that does is turning two shapes made of just lines into a solid object. So we got our first line. Now we need to create a rectangle spline to determine the shape it will draw all over this line. I'm gonna make it something like 37 centimeters wide. That's just a little wider than our road at the bottom. And for the height it actually is a good idea to set it to zero in this case, so we can easily manipulate it later on. Now all you need to do is dragging these two splines on top of our newly created sweep object. And make sure the rectangle is above the spline. 
Another quick thing that will save us time is going in the sweep options and under the caps section you can select create single object. This will make sure every part is connected when we start moving things. For safety measures let's also duplicate the sweep object and hide the previous one by holding alt and double clicking these dots. But the other one we can make it editable by pressing C and if you follow the steps correctly it should be just one object now. In our polygon mode select all the polygons, you can do this by pressing Ctrl or Command and A. And now press D on the keyboard to pick the extrude tool. Or just right click and pick it there. And when you start dragging it, it should give you some thickness. But as you can see it gives us some glitchy stuff. This is probably because we made it flat and it doesn't even know everything should be pointing in one direction. So let's undo this and with everything still selected, right click and select Align Normals. When you extrude again now, everything should work fine, but the shape is hollow, so select the Create Caps option at the right side to close everything off. I'm not going to extrude this one too much, because I want some slanted edges going downward. So with everything still selected, right click again and select Bevel. And depending on where you click and drag now, it will give you some glitchy stuff or not. You can see the difference in the small icon next to our cursor when you drag on an edge or on a polygon. And when you get to look at the bottom and drag from the edge, you should get something like this. You can also further manipulate this with the move tool. Great, so that is it for our bridge. But it is floating right now, so we are going to add some pillars beneath them. In this case it would be easy to do this manually, but in bigger scenes you might want some automation. We are going to start off with a first pillar here, which is just a cube. And let's add three segments at the x-axis. Make it editable and select these middle polygons on each side. And with the scale tool and holding Ctrl or Command, I'm gonna drag these inwards a little bit so we have this nice indent on the pillar. Nice. Get ourselves a new cloner and drag this pillar inside of it. But this time we will need to have it follow our bridge its curves. To do that, set the mode to object and now go back to that sweep we kept as a backup and only copy and paste the spline from it. I'm also going to rename this one again. And all we need to do now is selecting our cloner again and dragging the spline on that object field down here. Now it follows our bridge, but the distribution isn't correct. Fix this by setting it from count to even. And we probably don't need this many pillars now, so 5 will do. Also, let's not forget to move these down a little. You will have to do this with the spline object and not the cloner itself. And to adjust the position of this pillar here, we can select the start point of our spline and move it in a little. And the same thing goes for the one at the end, but drag it out a little. And you can also see the other pillars moving with it, which is useful in this case. My sidewalks are a little too wide I guess, so I'm gonna select both the original cubes and resize those. Let's also make sure things keep tidy by naming everything because there are a lot more objects to come. Our next step is adding some road marks or stripes as you may call them. There are many techniques for this again, but most of them are incredibly annoying to do. So what I will be doing is adding another cube and resize it to something that feels right as one mark on the road. And let's get a new cloner for this one again and set the mode to object, duplicate that backup spline again and drag it inside of our object field. We will also need to set the mode to even again and under the transform tab you might need to rotate the object so it aligns correctly with the road. Also to avoid the first one to peek over the edge, move our first spline point inwards a little again. Now it's just a matter of increasing the count to something that feels right. Let's also make sure these are only getting above the road ever so slightly. Now for the bottom road we will do the exact same thing, but I need a new spline for this one because we didn't make it already. So I just create this first point and then duplicate it to the bottom so I get a straight line. Everything else is just the same steps over again. And make sure you keep everything organized while we are at it. To finish our bridge we need to add some railings at the sides. We can do this by combining the techniques we've gone through earlier in this video. The most accurate way is to draw a new spline with our pen tool again. You want to draw it exactly over the edge of our bridge. You can also keep the straight lines again. And when it's done we can add a chamfer to the corners again. 
but do this for each one individually because we have an inner corner and an outer corner which are not the same size. Let's move it up a little and create a new cylinder that will be our base pole or post. You can go really thin on this one. Get a new cloner object again and it is the same technique once more using the object mode and setting the spline as the object with the distribution to even. Also adjust the start and the end point again to make it look nice. Now you can do the exact same thing on the other side, so I'm going to speed this up for you. You could copy and paste the previous step and adjust the spline, but it is way too easy to mess up the rounded corners, so creating it from scratch ends up being faster most of the time. Next up is the actual rail. This will be a sweep object again, so let's get a rectangle and make it really small. And now we can get it inside of our sweep, together with a copy of our rail. Make sure the rectangle is at the top to avoid this glitch. Now do the same thing on the other side again, and you will have to readjust the start and the end points again, because we want the rails to go all the way to the edge. And I'm going to say this once more, naming and grouping everything will save you a lot of time and pain when you need to edit or expand things later. Okay, our street and bridge are done now, but things look quite empty, so I thought it would be nice to add some small details. I'll start with the street light. To have a better overview, create a new document for this one. And all there is to it is going into one of our side views and drawing a spline like this one and adding a chamfer to the corner. Or maybe it looks better when we raise this point, like it is for most real street lights. Now this time we need a circle for the sweep and make it small enough so we don't get a weird fat looking pole. For the light itself I use a capsule object and put it in place. Also make a backup duplicate of it already, which will be the light bulb later on. Now what I would normally do is making it editable and cut the bottom half off. But it is too hard to select exactly the bottom of this one, so instead you can use the slice option of the capsule itself. Now after making it editable you can select all the points at the end curve, but make sure your selection tool has only select visible elements turned off. And when it is selected, use the scale tool to squeeze it in a little. I'm also going to move these back a bit. It also looks nice when we do the opposite at the other side so it looks longer. Now unhide the intact capsule and resize it to make it fit as a light bulb. So that is our street light, let's group it in a null and we can copy this into our previous file. And we have to resize this one obviously. And I'm going to stick with one on each side. As a final detail I thought some bushes would look nice. I made some simplified ones that look like a water drop to kind of fit the overall style here. You can do this by creating a sphere and adding a taper object on it. When that is done you can click here on fit to parent and the bounding box will perfectly fit around it. Now when you increase the strength you get this teardrop shape and of course you can play around with it to get the best result. I'm gonna scale this down and create some slightly modified duplicates all over the place. And let's also group these again so we have a clean file. The modeling part is done now, but we are going to finish things up here. In the example image we used an isometric camera, but it will not look at our model from the right side now, so as a preparation you can already group all our objects we made. And now when we go in our isometric camera, you can rotate the model to the direction you like. It's also a great time to make adjustments to the bushes here. Another detail I'm going to add is another slightly bigger cube at the bottom, so it looks like a pedestal. I also notice I accidentally rotated the model too much, so this looks better now. Now we can start lighting and coloring our scene. What I'll usually do is going into my project settings by pressing Ctrl or Command and D. Now here you can set the color to pure white if you want to. Also in our render settings add an ambient occlusion and global illumination, you can keep these untouched. And if you would render right now everything is black because there is no light so let's go with our easy to use physical sky. For this one I found it works just fine when you keep it at 12 o'clock. And for my taste the shadow is a little bit too strong. You can adjust this under the sun tab and all the way at the bottom decrease the shadow density. And I hope you can tell it's easier on the eyes now. An optional thing to do is adding a regular light and placing it somewhere about here. Make sure it's lifted high enough so it actually lights the top of our scene. 
and I made it a little bit orange and reduced the intensity. So this one gives us a slightly warmer touch and brightens some of our shadows as well. When I render again, you can notice something you might already have seen, and that is that our road marks are creating some shadows. I think it looks better without them, so here is a workaround for this. When you find the road mark groups and right click on them, under the Cinema 4D tags you can get the compositing tag. Now down here deselect cast shadows, scene by race and scene by GI. When you render now you can see the ones at the bottom are barely visible, so let's duplicate that tag to the other group. You can do this by holding Ctrl or Command and dragging. As our final step we are adding some materials to all of this. I'm creating a camera first and activate and deactivate it here so that the view is saved. Now I can go back in the perspective view to work faster. There is nothing special to the materials, you can copy what you see here, but it is just a bunch of colors with the reflectance turned off. Basically a bunch of greens and grays. To get the material on the street you have to actually put it on the cube inside of the bool we made, so make sure you don't apply it to the bool itself. For the bridge you probably also want to add different materials on the top and bottom. So first drop the material of the bottom part just on the overall object. And then select the top polygons and with these still selected you can drag the road material on it. Great, you're done now. Depending on how your scene turned out you might also want to further adjust some stuff like I will. For example the shadow can be a little stronger again. And in our render settings it's options. I'm going to increase our global brightness a bit to make it pop more. So that was it for this one, I hope you learned something new today. Leaving a like really helps me out. Also if you have any comments or questions I will do my best to get back to you. And I hope to see you in the next one.